So in any optimization problem, obviously after reading the question, what you want to do is draw a picture that represents the scenario. So let's go ahead and do that. That is probably the impression you had at first. This is my attempt at being hilarious, but that's not the right picture. So let's try a different picture. We'll do this one. We have two light sources and we have to kind of parse this very carefully. We will notice it says that one light source is three times as strong as the other. So we are going to see in a moment that we can represent that idea by using this 3K versus 1K. We'll talk about K in just a moment. And then we also know that we are placing them 10 feet apart. So obviously we've labeled that total distance 10. And then the question is, where should an object be placed on the line so as to receive the least illumination? So we're going to take some unspecified object and just place it right here somewhere. And we're trying to figure out how far away from each light source we will place that object to receive the least total illumination. So we've called the distance from the brighter object to that object x and then the distance from the dimmer object to our object 10 minus x because the total length was 10. Let's go back now and investigate this idea that illumination of this light source is directly proportional to the strength of the light source but it's also inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. Okay, so let's try to capture that in an equational form. Let's call the illumination i. It's going to be a function of distance, so it's i of x. Now the fact that it is directly proportional to the strength of the source would mean we would set that equal to k. k can represent some sort of constant that quantifies the strength of the illumination. So that's really what K is. It's directly proportional, so we place it in the numerator of our expression. That's very important. But it's also inversely proportional to the square of the distance. So you would put the distance down here, but then you'd have to square it. Notice it's in the denominator because it is inversely proportional. So it's very important to understand where this equation is coming from. Now what we're going to do is come up with an illumination equation representing the total. Remember, there are two light sources, so we might say that the total illumination is going to equal the illumination supplied by the 3K source plus the illumination supplied by the K source. Now we're going to expand each of the two terms on the right-hand side. Now for the illumination of the 3K source, and remember, you're using this equation right here, you're gonna put the illumination strength in the numerator and then the distance in the denominator squared the distance squared so for the 3k source we've said the illumination is 3k and then divided by the distance from our diagram that distance is just x so it's x squared plus the illumination supplied by the dimmer source that was just 1k divided by the distance from that dimmer source to our object squared, we can see that that's 10 minus x squared. There is our illumination equation. And after establishing that, in order to find the minimum, what we need to do next is come up with the derivative of this illumination equation. But perhaps before doing that derivative, we might wanna rewrite this. It makes taking the derivative just a little bit easier. So let's bring the x squared up here to the numerator and also the 10 minus x squared up to the numerator. So we are simply rewriting this as 3k times x to the negative two plus 1k times 10 minus x to the negative two. That's much better for the purposes of taking the derivative. So here we go, we're gonna call this i prime of x we're going to use a simple power rule for the first term here. So negative 2 multiplied by 3k will give us negative 6k. And then it becomes x to the power of negative 3 because you have to subtract 1 from the power. Over here, you're going to pull this negative 2 down. So you're going to get a minus 2k. You recopy the inside function. You multiply, well, you actually raise it to the power of negative three. I got a little ahead of myself there. And then you multiply it by the derivative of the inside. Now the derivative of the inside is just a negative one. Hopefully you recognize that we applied the chain rule for that derivative. Now we can see you're multiplying a negative two K by a negative one. That's just gonna make this a plus two K. So we might wanna just make a little adjustment here. And there is the derivative. Now, 
We next need to find a critical point, and to find the critical point, we would set our derivative equal to zero. So we'll do that next. Remember that k is a constant, so it might be useful for us to just divide it out of our way. Technically, you have to divide the right side by k as well, but that's going to maintain zero there. So you're going to have negative 6x to the negative 3 plus 2, 10 minus x to the negative 3. This is still equal to zero. Solving this is going to be a very enjoyable experience. Why don't we rewrite this as negative 6 over x cubed plus 2 over 10 minus x cubed. Very nice. We could then add this term to the other side. Notice it's a minus 6 over x cubed, so you'd add it to the other side. This gives you 2 over 10 minus x cubed is equal to 6 over x cubed. We can simplify this a little bit. If you multiply both sides by 1 half, then this numerator just becomes a 1, which is a little bit nicer. And then 6 times a half is just 3. So that makes it a little prettier. Next, we might want to cube root both sides because that will get rid of these pesky cubes here. Now, when you cube root both sides, what you technically have to do is cube root the numerators and the denominators on both sides. So it looks something like that. The cube root of 1 is 1. Put this over the cube root. Now this is cool because the cube root and the cube cancel, so you get just 10 minus x there. The cube root of 3 is the cube root of 3. I'm very smart. And over here the cube root and the cube cancel to just make x. All right, next I would prefer to cross multiply, so you go x times 1, which is just x, and set that equal to whatever we get by multiplying that nastiness. So you're going to have cube root of 3 multiplied by 10 minus x. Let's go ahead and distribute the cube root of 3. So you'll have x equals, you're going to have 10 cube root of 3 minus, I guess we'll just call it x cube root of 3. You could also say cube root of 3x. We'll add the x cube root of 3 to the other side. So you'd have x plus x cube root of 3. This would equal 10 cube root of 3. We'll factor an x from the left side. That gives us 1 plus cube root of 3. We are very close here because now we can just divide both sides of the equation by 1 plus cube root of 3. So our final x is going to be 10 cube root of 3 all divided by 1 plus cube root of 3. So this is going to turn out to be the correct answer for x. We would probably have to prove that this actually indeed minimizes the illumination. So for that, you'd have to employ a first derivative test. What you do in the first derivative test is you just plot your critical point on a number line. Then what you do is select values smaller than and greater than the critical point. Now let's perhaps take out our calculator and figure out what this ghastly number is. So 10 times the cube root of 3 over 1 plus the cube root of 3. I'm trying to punch this into my calculator right now. And that turns out to be about 5.91. So we would have to choose values smaller than and greater than 5.91. We might choose 5 here. So we would have to do i prime of 5. We'll show you how to do that in a moment. And you'd also have to do i prime of a number greater than 5.91. We could use 6. So we have to plug this into the derivative. And the derivative was this expression right here before we divided the k out of it. So let's grab that and bring it down here. There it is. So yeah, we'd have to plug 5 in. And if you plugged 5 in, you would discover that the derivative would turn out to be a negative value. It doesn't matter what it actually is, but it would be negative. So that would mean that the illumination function is decreasing up to the critical point. And then if you plugged in the positive 6, you would find that the derivative turns out itself to be positive. So the illumination function would be increasing like so. That, lo and behold, illustrates that there is indeed a minimum illumination when x is equal to that crazy critical point. Now we just make sure we've answered the question in full. It says, where should the object be placed? Well, we discovered x, so it should be placed that crazy number away from the more illuminated light source. So we can say that the object should be placed 
10 cube root of 3 over 1 plus cube root of 3 from the brighter light source? That would be the correct answer to the question. I suppose we should put the unit in here as well. The distances were measured in, it looks like feet. So just don't forget to put feet right there. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. If not, no worries. I appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.